Flynn and welcome to It's Elementary with Calvert Library. Today I'd like to share a book with you called On Wings of Words, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson. This book was written by Jennifer Byrne and illustrated by Becca Stadlander. I want to give a big thank you to the book's publisher, Chronicle Books, for allowing us to share it with you today. So you might know that name, Emily Dickinson. You might remember from school or from hearing grown-ups talk or maybe your own reading that Emily Dickinson was a famous American poet. We're going to learn a little bit about her in this book and even hear some snippets of some of her poems. Let's take a closer look. Soft moonlit snow draped the Dickinson house in white. It reaches to the fence. It wraps it rail by rail till it is lost in fleeces. It flings a crystal veil. In a little room, in the dark before dawn, a baby girl was born. Her parents celebrated the holiday. They called Emily. Emily met the world and began to explore. To little Emily, every bird, every flower, every bee or breeze or slant of light seemed to speak to her. She explored with her eyes, her ears, her thoughts, and found new words for everything she was discovering. The bee is not afraid of me. I know the butterfly. The brooks laugh louder when I come. When thunder crashed and lightning flashed, Emily got scared and called it the fire. Emily adored her older brother, Austin. She said, there was always such a hurrah wherever he was. She loved her school friends who she said were a warmth as near as if the sun were shining in your hand. Every day, Emily's life rippled with new joys and swayed with new feelings. It was clear Emily was becoming a person in many ways like other people, only more so. Her happies were happier, her sads were sadder, her thoughts were deeper, her desires were stronger, and oh, there was so much that Emily loved. My heart grows light so fast that I could mount a grasshopper and gallop around the world and not fatigue him any. Most of all, Emily loved her books. The strongest friends of the soul, books. To Emily, every book was an adventure, a distant journey on a sea of words. And if a book was forbidden, well, that didn't stop Emily. Like the book she wanted that Austin smuggled into the house and hid inside the piano. Emily rushed it up to her room and read it in delicious secrecy. Every story she read at night by candlelight or in the garden's midday sun was a new passion, a ray of light. But there were shadows too. In the 1800s, sorrow was a daily companion, the sorrow of diseases incurable, accidents untreatable, and deaths too soon, too close. All this frightened Emily and flooded her mind with questions. Emily tried to find answers at home, she looked for answers at her church. She searched for answers at school. But everywhere she looked, she was told to obey without asking, to believe without knowing why. So she began to put her faith in what she could see and understand. In the name of the bee, and of the butterfly, and of the breeze. Amen. 
when her very religious school principal separated the class into hopers and no hopers, Emily was put in the group without hope. Yet Emily did have hope, her own kind. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. So with her hope, she sought her truth. I am out with lanterns looking for myself. Then, like rays of sun breaking through the clouds, her thoughts and feelings started to come to her as words, new words, her own words. The robin, bumblebees, and daisies she loved, the dark diseases and frightening deaths, the unknowable God and mysterious heaven all came pouring out as poems. These are budding and springing and singing. Answers she couldn't find in other people, she started to find in herself. I have been dreaming, dreaming a golden dream with eyes all the while wide open. Her poems soothed her sadness, gave her strength, set her free with the power of her words and the freedom of her imagination. She tasted spices in foreign lands and hid inside a flower. She leaned against the sun, dwelt in a house of possibilities, and rode a carriage to the ends of time. She became a bird, a worm, a ghost, a god, a beggar, a king, a somebody, a nobody. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They'd banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public, like a frog. To tell your name the livelong June. To an admiring bog. She called her poems. My letter to the world that never wrote to me. And so, with her words, her mind, Emily dove into the darkest depths of the sea and of sadness. She rose up to the glowing heights of the sun and of joy. Emily saw the inner world was bigger than all the world outside. The brain is wider than the sky, for, put them side by side, the one the other will contain with ease and you beside. Emily spent more and more time in her room, writing, creating. She ventured out less and less. Exhilaration is within. As Emily's inner world grew bigger, her outer world grew smaller. Yes, there were things she still loved in the worldly world. She loved her gardens, the bees, the springtime, and the wind combing its fingers through the trees. And of course, her family, a few very special friends, her big dog, Carlo, and children. Emily always loved children, but most people she saw rarely or not at all. Emily began to dress in white, white like clouds, like the foam on a wave, white like a cocoon in her room from which butterflies were born, butterflies that were poems that flew with Emily on wings of words. People in the town said Emily was weird. Emily was strange. But Emily didn't care what they said of her. Her world was somewhere else. My country is truth. Emily never stopped writing, never stopped exploring. With every day and every poem, she saw more, discovered more, traveled deeper, soared higher for the rest of her life. On a Saturday in May, 1886, Emily died, slipping into the eternity she had wondered about and written about all her life. Then, 
something wonderful and amazing happened. Emily's sister, Vinnie, opened drawers, trunks, boxes, and closets, and found hundreds and hundreds of Emily's poems, more than anyone ever imagined, poems that, on the wings of Emily's words, flew out and away into the future and around the world. Today, almost every library, every bookstore, every school in every city, state, and country has Emily's poems, Emily's words, Emily's letters to each of us. The world is sleeping. We must be crowing cocks and singing larks and a rising sun to awake her. And in those words, can you hear Emily's voice echoing through the years, speaking to you, to all of us who are brave enough to take a pen in hand, to look deep and write what we discover? I dwell in possibility, a fairer house than prose, more numerous of windows, superior for doors. Of visitors, the fairest. For occupation, this. The spreading wide my narrow hands to gather paradise. The end. It's the end of the story, but there's a few more pages in the book. Oh, it's a section about Emily's poetry, about discovering the world of poetry with some fun exercises you can do, and even an author's note about the book and the artist's note about the illustration she did. Sometimes good nonfiction books like this one have really good back matter that when you check them out from the library or buy your own copy, it's great to give a closer look and read more about the subject. So today, we're gonna be doing our own project that we're going to make and then we get to play a game with it. So what this is, is it's a game kind of like dominoes, only instead of using wooden or plastic pieces, we're going to use pieces of paper that we cut out of a big piece of paper. And instead of drawing dots, we're going to draw a line down the middle and write words. So our words are going to be rhyming words kind of like the words in some of Emily Dickinson's poetry. So you're going to need a few things to make this project with me. You're going to need some paper. You can just use scratch paper or construction paper, cardstock, pieces of old boxes that you're going to recycle, just something that you're going to be able to cut. So you need a nice pair of scissors. If they're really sharp scissors, you might want to get your grown-up to help, or if you're using cardboard or a heavier piece of paper, you might want to get your grown-up to help with the scissors for that too. We're also going to need to use something to write with. I'm using a magic marker, a black one. You can use any color you want. And you're also going to need some scratch paper. So for my scratch paper today, I'm just using some old things I've used for other programs. So I'll wait a minute while you gather your things. Now that you have all your things ready, the first thing we're going to do is use our piece of scratch paper. So I have this piece of paper that I wrote about lift and drag and thrust and weight for another program. And on this side, I'm going to make some lists. So the first thing I'm going to do is make some lists of rhyming words. So the first word I decided to use was Dickinson, because our poet's name is Emily Dickinson. So I thought, what words rhyme with Dickinson? Well, what's the end of the word? Sun? You could do two types of sun, the sun in the sky, or the sun like a person, a sun. Oh, what rhymes with sun? Fun, ton, bun, spun, one, stun, done, run, anyone. All of those are rhyming words. So we're gonna make a couple different lists of rhyming words. They can be words that you found in a poem, or they could just be words that someone uses every day around the house. Speaking of house, what did we learn in the beginning of the book? That Emily Dickinson was born in a house called Amherst. So I decided to use the word house as one of my rhyming words. House, mouse, blouse, that's a woman's shirt. Douse, that's like when you dump water on something. Spouse, grouse, grouse is a type of bird. Lighthouse, dollhouse, farmhouse, all of those are words that rhyme with house. Emily Dickinson was a girl, so I wrote down girl and thought of some words that rhyme with girl, like pearl, curl, swirl, 
you get the idea. So you want a couple different categories of rhyming words. So you might want to pause the video and on your scratch paper, do some brainstorming with those rhyming words. All right. Once you have all of your rhyming words together, you can set them aside and get out your construction paper or whatever you're using, the cardboard or some other type of paper, you get your scissors. So first we're gonna decide how big we're gonna want our dominoes. My dominoes are about, uh, let's see, I put it this way and I cut in half. So take your piece of paper, maybe fold it in half so you get a nice fold there. And then you just cut right along your fold. That's easy. All right, now I made them about that thick. That's about three fingers, maybe four if you have small fingers. And you just cut across. So for my deck of dominoes, I cut out 52 of these little segments of paper. So you might want to pause the video again <laughs> and cut out your paper till you have at least 10 or 20 of these, but like I said, I cut out 52 of them. That's a lot. So once you've cut out 52 of these, we're going to go back to our scratch paper where we wrote down our list of words that rhyme. And you need your marker. And what you're going to do is take your little piece of paper that you cut and your marker, and you're gonna draw a line down the middle. I didn't quite get mine perfectly in the middle, and that's okay. If you want to try again, you can. Try to make it in the middle. There we go, that's a little better. But like I said, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. Then you take your list of words, and you find two words. So let's go with, hmm, Let's go with run, which if you recall, rhymes with Dickinson. So I'm going to write the word run on one side. And then, ooh, how about a word that rhymes with girl? How about curl? So I'm going to write curl. So on one side of my domino, it says run, and the other side it says curl. So you're going to do that for however many dominoes you cut out, like I said. I have 52, that's an awful lot. And it might take you a while, so once again, you might wanna pause the recording and write down your rhyming words. If you're having trouble coming up with as many rhyming words as I did, you might wanna get your grown up to help you. It can be a fun activity to play with rhyming words with each other. Once you have written down all of your rhyming words and all of your dominoes, once again, at least 20, I did 52, you're ready to play your game. Are you ready? Now to play our game, you need at least two players. You deal out a couple tiles, usually five is a good number to start with, and leave the rest turned upside down in a pile. You then start to play off each other, only instead of using numbers like in dominoes, we're gonna use our rhyming words. So you see here, somebody played frog and run, fun rhymed with run. The other side of fun was flat, someone played slat. The other side of slat was a dress E, which rhymes with T. And you can see both T, like the type you drink, and a golf T type of T are on that one. That would be like your double where you have 10 dots and 10 dots, so somebody played off the middle of it with plea. And it keeps going until someone has run out of their five tiles. Now, if you can't play a rhyming word, you then pick up one of those face down tiles from the pile, kind of like you go fish. You have a fish pile for dominoes. So you can see this is all 52 of my tiles. I sat out like I was playing a game. Once you've played your game and you have this lovely mixture of tiles, if you want, you can write your own poem, just like Emily Dickinson did. Let's see if we can use these words to make a poem. The tree unfurled its leaves. It twirled and swirled and whirled. 
A cuckoo bird there ensued. He drew and flew and spun near anyone, near the sun. The end. <laughs> that was a silly poem. But it's fun to even speak poems as you play the game with a friend or family member. I hope you have a lot of fun playing your game and that you've enjoyed learning about Emily Dickinson, a little bit about rhyming words and poetry, and how to make your own game. Once you've made your game and played it with a grown-up or one of your friends, be sure to go to Beanstack, where the library has activities that you can do for hashtag Calvert Reads. One of the activities is to make your own game and to learn a new game and share it with others. So once you've done this today, you can check off two activities for hashtag Calvert Reads. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to check back with all of our social media feeds for programs for the whole family from Calvert Library.